Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and today I have an exciting episode for you guys. I'm actually going to be doing my own EEG. And we have four electrodes, four channels here. Got some nice little electrodes, we got some paste on them already. They're ready to roll guys, that's the conductive paste which picks up the electrical activity in my brain. And we also got some some prep, it's kind of like a, some exfoliating stuff that I will be scrubbing on my scalp to get low impedances. So we get a good connection and we get a nice clean signal, guys. You use this scrub, this prep stuff to lower the impedances. You're gonna wanna shoot for under 10,000 ohms, under 5,000 ohms, perfect. Now, we don't have a, something that records the impedances now, but we'll be doing it in the future. We're just gonna have to trust that I know how to hook up an EED with good impedances, guys. So the first step is going to be putting on the reference in the ground. Now, where can you put the reference in the ground? When I do the midline, FZ, CZ, and PZ, I kinda like put the reference in the ground in between the midline. So, that's where we're gonna start, guys and the white wire is gonna be my ground. So, I've never done this before, doing an EEG on myself, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. So I got my little prep here, some Q-tips, I'm feeling my head. This isn't gonna be exact because, you know, you can't measure your own head. So I'm gonna do this completely by feel. We got our white electrode, our ground. We're gonna put it on here. Boom. How's it look, guys? Hopefully I got it on the scalp. That's one thing you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna make sure you get it on the scalp, guys. And I'll put my uh, reference kinda near it. Scrub my head some more. Try to get to the scalp. It's hard when you can't see, guys. The gray is the reference, so it's good to put the ground and the reference on pretty early that way because you can't get a signal without your reference and ground on so those go first and now time to put on the electrodes so what electrodes are we putting on i'm going with p3 p4 which are kind of in the back of the head and the posterior region in the back and then o1 and o2 which are all the way in the back so p3 and p4 o1 and o2 and we're gonna get those electrodes. So let's start with O2. Um, I estimate probably around here. Scrub, scrub, scrub. See what I can do. Try to make sure it's good impedances. I'll try to scrub hard enough. Yeah, that's one thing. You gotta make sure you scrub hard enough so you get a good enough connection and your impedances are low and equal, guys. So. Put O2 there, should be a little bit right of the middle of the back of my head. And the blue one's going to be O1, it's a little bit to the left of the middle of the back of my head. So, might not be completely exact, but it should be close enough. The big thing is you wanna make sure you put it on the place that you scrubbed, because if you scrub one spot, and you place it in another spot, well, you clean the wrong spot and it's not gonna lower the impedances like you wanted it to. So, O1 on the left, O2 on the right, and now right above them, we're gonna put P3 and P4 on. Those are the last ones, and then we'll be running this EEG, guys. So, a little bit more prep. Green is P4, let me feel around, try and feel where I'm at. P4, maybe you're up here somewhere. Scrub kind of hard, especially if you don't have something that can check impedances. So it's got to be good the first time. Put it on. Boom. Stick it on. Smear it to the scalp so it sticks. Boom. I, I think that's, that's feeling kind of good. That's feeling kind of good so far, guys. And we're on the last one until we will have our EEG and we will be running. We'll be in business, guys. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And here we go. 
Last one. Hopefully there's enough pace left on this one. All right. Oh, it should be a little higher. Yeah, I can almost feel it, guys. Uh, I think that should be good. B, how do you? How does it look, guys? How does it look? Tell me in the comments. How does it look, guys? All right. So here is the main event. Let's see if it can actually record my EEG, guys. Oh. We got a signal, we got a signal. So we got some muscle artifact coming in here, guys, from 02 and 01. They're not lined up perfectly, but you guys can see. Now, if I relax and close my eyes, we're gonna wanna see the posterior dominant rhythm. Let's see if we can record that now. Let me close my eyes and relax. It goes away when you open your eyes, it attenuates, and when you close your eyes, it appears again. It's called the posterior dominant rhythm, and you wanna make sure it's symmetric on both sides. So you're gonna to wanna to check O2 and O1. So let's try it again and count how many waves per second. Each one of these bold lines is a second. So here we go. What was my PDR, Christopher? What's PDR? Posterior dominant rhythm, guys. This is oh. why I'm asking these things. This is a teaching video. I'm hoping we're at a eight plus because a normal posterior dominant rhythm is going to be between eight and 12 hertz, which is the alpha rhythm. Very good question. Let's see if I can get to that eight to 12 hertz. Checking the O1 and O2. All right, how many was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I'm about 10 hertz, guys. There's, there's a little, little bit of noise, a little bit of muscle. Not completely still, guys, but here we are. I recorded my first EEG, guys. This is, uh, it, it doesn't look the uh, most beautiful of setups here, guys. Nothing's in a box or anything, but I'm gonna be doing more experiments. I'm gonna be creating a little montage. So now that we have a EEG system that can record from four electrodes, we're gonna make a mini bipolar montage comparing P3 to O1 and P4 to O2. So we'll be able to easily compare both sides of the brain and see, is my EEG continuous? That's the first thing you wanna check. Is it reactive, meaning does the PDR, posterior dominant rhythm that we talked about, appear after closing my eyes? And is it symmetrical? Those are some of the three main things you wanna look at when just looking at an EEG. And cool stuff here, we can see muscle artifacts, some electrode pops at O1. Maybe let's do that again. So we can make some electrode pops at O2. Let me feel them. You guys can see that. That's coming from tapping on the electrode. As you guys can see, if you tap on the electrode, it makes a little popping thing like that. And can put one on the other side too. Boom, 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 P3 and P4, popping all over the place. So when a patient's moving around, you'll see muscle activity and these things, these electrode pops. But guys, if you have our software ION, we have this magical artifact reduction button which can reduce this muscle artifact and reduce those electrode pops that we were just talking about. Eye movements as well, but you're not gonna see eye movements on these electrodes because we don't have electrodes near the eyes picking up the electrical activity of the eyes. So that's pretty much it. This is my first time recording my own EEG on my own software, ION. I'm super excited to show you guys this. Are you guys excited? Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys on the next video. Next video, we're gonna have montages and we can talk more about EEGs. So make sure you subscribe, like this video again, and I'll see you guys on the next video.